So let's just jump right into it, shall we? Mr. Porter, you talked about some um, ways in which you would support some consolidation. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Because, you know, I think all of us, I, I'm, how many people in the room are affiliated with a township or a township employee? Strong, strong turnout from the townships. Townships are the, the easy target that come up a lot. Um, why is that and what is it that they do that cannot be eliminated in your view, Mr. Porter? Well, I think every township has potential. Oh, oh, I don't know these mics did. We, let's see who else is also in the room. Do we have any library folks here? Well, they didn't get the memo. Uh, <laughs> how about, any mosquito uh, abatement employees I see, here? I see the fire boys here. We have fire districts in the room. Anybody, any other units? The government just raise your hand if you belong to any other unit. How many here are just citizens don't know belong to anybody? Excellent. That is excellent. Thank you. That's where I believe the whole thing generates. It is the citizens of road districts. Yeah, well, technically road districts are a separate form of government, but everybody assumes they're part of the township. But citizens should drive the whole initiative of the dialogue. If there is complaints, and we had complaints in the school district issue in Lamont, citizens drove us to that point after the, so the buzzwords come in. Buzzwords are easy, sound bites are easy. It's difficult to get into the meat until you have your open dialogue and do your research and find out what's going on. So. I think citizen discussion is the first thing. River Forest decided to put a bill first and then have discussion second. I think that discussion now is going to be coming on like gangbusters. But you need to have the citizens' involvement, not necessarily the political agencies who's trying to upmanship or find budgetary resources uh, the, to better off their system. Do we really think the state should take over more controls over services in the state of Illinois with their culture? I don't think so. Well, but the, the bill proposed that we're discussing with River Forest is um, consolidating with the village or the municipality, correct? That's Not correct. the state. And so um, the, my initial question was about townships and what is it that they provide that cannot be provided by another government? Again, I think Chris, uh, Chris can I call him Chris? I'm always Representative Welch, that sounds also, Chris. but Chris is great. I think we have to review the statutory authority. I'm not even sure if River Forest is a home rule community. If you're home rule, maybe you can pull it off, but I don't think municipalities have general assistance authority, and that is a whole area that ha it's a statutory requirement of townships to do that. I don't know if municipalities have the statutory authority to do assessment work. In DuPage County, you actually have to assess, the assessor has to do the assessment work. In Evanston, if that referendum passes, their intent is to just have somebody at the counter hand them a, an address where to call somebody at the Cook County level. God help them at that point. But so it, it really, and then the other area is will the municipalities take on the services that are provided by the township and the road districts, especially the road districts? In DuPage County, and I'm not as familiar with that as I should, but there's 950 some miles by both agencies that they take care of. They have about the same number of employees. The difference in DuPage County is they're all unionized full time and the townships aren't. The townships have to do Julie searches and that exposure expense for anything. The county is not required to do that. The township road districts have to give upwards to half their budget to the local municipality when they levy because of state statute the, the village uses it for whatever purposes they seem fit, or and I would hope it's in road districts. So if a road district wanted to buy a truck for $50,000 to plow roads, they have to come up with $100,000 because 50% of that right off the top is gonna go to the municipality. And townships and counties are totally different in their plow services. Townships on the most part do subdivisions. We all, if you live on a corporate, you know what I mean, of the cul-de-sacs, the terrible nightness. Whereas the county is scheduled for four lane roads and tandem driving. So they're totally different gear setups. Now, I guess if you merger, you steal all the township equipment and hope to have, you know, it can work out. But I don't think economically it will, we'll discover if we actually have citizen discussion groups, it sounds great on paper, but I don't think it's going to work economically. But, okay. Representative Welch, why don't you weigh in here? Just in response to, to uh, Bob, just briefly, I want to say, because I filed a township related bill does not mean I'm against township government. You know, we're here about smart streamlining. I think we have to look at 
where is consolidation good? And remember at the outset, I talked about River Forest Township and the village having Cotomeran as boundaries. That's the same thing that we had with Evanston. They had it with Cicero a few years ago. There's a lot of townships uh, in, the, in this area that serve 13, 14 municipalities. You know, I'm not talking about that type of township. Township government serves a good purpose, in my opinion. You know, when I got elected, one of the things I was told that you should go down to Springfield and do is protect the poor, protect the elderly, and protect our youth. And I think township government across the state, a lot of those townships are doing that. I think River Forest Township is doing that. So where did I this think, idea come from? I think this for particular your bill, bill is, an, is an area where smart streamlining can occur. This is where, after the new mayor of River Forest was elected, as I always do, I reach out to my mayors. I sat down with her and I talked about what, what her vision of River Forest was. And I shared some things that I wanted to do. And we, we saw a commonality in, in uh, streamlining services. I talked to her about the Evanston bill that had recently passed. Uh, and she liked that and she encouraged me to keep uh, looking at that. I sat down with her. I sat down with uh, the supervisor of River Forest Township, both of them separately. Then I sat down with them and brought them together before I ever filed my bill. And just because a bill is filed does not mean you should stop discussion. I think absolutely now is the time for discussion. This is, this is where discussion should occur and it's going to continue to occur, but I want to make sure that this issue is front and center and this is an area where I truly believe that we can consolidate the township and the village without losing any type of the services that are already being provided. So um, just a little bit of a personal anecdote here. So I, I happen to have several relatives and loved ones who are public employees. And so, like Andy said, we're not up here trying to um, destroy local governments. They serve critical, vital functions. I also am a homeowner in Cook County, and I look at my property tax bill, and I see lists of governments that I have never, ever received any sort of communication about or service from that I can readily see and, and you know, say, hey, this really helped me out. Um, and yet, Chairman Cronin, you've been working on trying to find areas to do some consolidation for a couple of years now, and, and, the, and the success has been in baby steps. Yeah. Why is it so difficult? Well. Uh, it's difficult because um, these uh, units of government have been created over the course of time. Um, we find that the statutory authority, the roots are very deep. Some of them go back a hundred years. Um, they were created by referendum at a time when the circumstances were far different than they are today. Um, and I think, you know, well-intentioned people who are working at a unit of government really do believe in their cause, and sometimes uh, it's difficult to see the bigger picture. Um, you know, I know a lot of folks feel somewhat defensive, you know, when we talk about it, you know, the consolidation word, I say, just see it, you know, I've been in discussions with folks, they get all animated and their face turns red and veins pop out of their neck and they think that uh, I'm interested in doing something that approaches their own personal life and their livelihood. Look, we're elected public servants. We all serve the same community of taxpayers. Um, you know, some of the innuendo here about somebody who's interested in, you know, political attention or interested in, I, you know, I, I, I think that's a little irresponsible. I, I, what we're doing at the county, frankly, has really sort of diminished the influence of the county. We have handed over services to neighboring counties and neighboring local governments that have heretofore been uh, under the authority of the county in the interests of the taxpayers. Again, I'm not here to pat myself on the back about it, but I'm here to say, look, we all serve the same taxpayers, whether you're in township government, you're in the fire district, mosquito abatement district, why don't we, and you said it yourself, Mr. Porter, why don't we engage in discussion? Why don't we have a real honest discussion about what it is we can do together? What are some commonalities? Where is some common ground? When the county, you know, highway uh, plow, truck plow driver is driving down the road and it's a county road and he lifts up his plow because he's going over township roads 
and then he puts it back down a couple miles down the road because he doesn't want to plow the road of the township because he wants to give the township guy something to do. We need to talk about that. And uh, look, it's nothing personal. I I've been in this business now. Uh, I was 20 years in Spring Springfield, and I'm it's almost four years in my first term here. I don't have the patience uh, anymore. I, I, I want to get to real substantive issues, and I want to work with people who are genuinely interested in finding solutions. And I think, to our credit, all of us, I think there's been, there's been a heightened awareness. I think it's partly because of the economy. People are hurting. A lot of people don't have jobs. You know, in the past, people didn't really care about the pensions and, you know, you know, government workers, but now they pay attention a little bit more because they are having a hard time making ends meet. And so I think the economy has contracted, right? There's been a, a, a downsizing of the economy, and I think it's only logical that there be a downsizing of government. And I think it's our duty and responsibility to do it. I'm not afraid of it. I'll talk about anything. I respect people that are in public service. I think they're there to serve the public and to help improve people's lives. But you know what? Maybe there's a better model. Maybe there's a better way to do it. So it's about services, but we can't be married to the same structure because, you know, after all, you know, there's statutory authority for public assistance and the assessment authority, there's a statute for that. I want to find people to engage with that say, you know what, maybe we can do it. Maybe there is a way to get there and provide the services for less cost. That's where we should be here in 2014, I think, with all due respect. Mr. Porter, would you like to respond to that? Hitting some of the marks. All right, excellent. We agree. Excellent. Um, so one of the things that you touched on, Mr. Porter, was um, road districts, and I'm sure after this winter, um, we'd all like our roads to be plowed. And uh, citizens might be a little up in arms if they weren't plowed in a timely fashion. Um, I'm coming at you, Mr. Costin, so be ready. And I'm sure that uh, if senior citizens or um, some of our poorer residents didn't have that general assistance fund that the townships provide, that would be uh, heartbreaking and some members of the media might write stories that would uh, have people up in arms. So how do we uh, go about this in a smart way? And how do we find the windows of opportunity? What is the future of this? Yeah, absolutely, and I think that what's really key here is that uh, we have a competent government. There are th certain things that townships do more competently and efficiently than municipalities and vice versa. And I think that we need to really strike a balance and look at that issue of competence because there are some legal uh, burdens that are passed on from the state that really affect the way that municipalities and townships can do things differently. <laughs> and obviously, we've already talked a little bit about some of the things that statutorily that townships can do that municipalities can't, and, and vice versa. Uh, so really, I think the issue is, is that I think that the people, the citizens in any given area, need to be given more power to determine what kind of function their government does and uh, have that ability to determine what that function will be. So the, the functions and the structure, I should say. So in, in one regard, so looking at townships, for example, I just wanted to uh, show a little bit about how, how extremely difficult it would be. A lot of times you see these surveys that say 60, 70, even up to close to 80% of people think that township elimination is something that we should very seriously consider. But for all practical purposes, for the vast majority of the state, there's almost absolutely no way that you can do that. Compare it to the state constitutional referendum, which is very, very hard. Uh, you have to have, to do a constitutional referendum, you have to get about 4% of the voters across the state of Illinois. For townships, you have to get 10% of the registered voters in each township to put it on the ballot. Now, to do a constitutional referendum, that period to collect those signatures is 540 days. On the township level, it's only 90 days. So it's six times harder 
in regards to the time frame and two and a half times harder in regards to the petition. So ultimately, I think that these barriers from the state are interfering uh, in the people's right to determine the structure and the scope of their local government, and that's definitely something that we need to look at. Representative Welch, um, you served on the Proviso Township District 209 School Board, and Andy mentioned I think there are 150 school districts in Cook County. Uh, there are 30 districts that have just one school. Several years ago, I recall Governor Pat Quinn talking quite a bit about school consolidation. You mentioned as Lieutenant Governor talking about it when you ran two years ago. Where are we at with that process and, and what, what's the future hold there with school district consolidation? I have not heard the school consolidation issue in the 2014 campaign like it was front and center in 2012. And I, and I certainly think it should be. Uh, I, I think it was a good issue and why it disappeared, uh, I don't know. Um, I'll tell you, after serving 12 years at Proviso High School and every year exp trying to explain why our high school had such poor test scores, uh, you know, you, you get tired of it. It's, it's hard to look at someone and explain failure. And, uh, but I, I can tell you, looking at the whole system and explaining how it works, you know, when a child comes to high school at 13, 14 years old and they're already reading at third, third fourth, or fifth grade level, it's too late. The high school is not going to do much. So then you look at what are, where are those kids coming to Proviso. And Proviso has seven feeder elementary districts feeding one high school. They're coming from all over Proviso Township out of seven elected different school boards, seven elected boards that are doing seven elected things going into one high school. And a couple of those districts uh, are single school elementary districts. And so in 2012, out, hey, Proviso Township is a perfect example of where we can at least look and study this issue. I think that's an example of what's happening all across the state. And I, I don't ever think it's good to just be against something to be against something. I think that if we look at certain areas where it, it could be smart and a good idea to do it, we should. We should have the discussion about it. And, and I love for uh, the school consolidation issue to get back on the table. And Proviso is one example of why.